Now on sunrise, precinct problems. After hours of caucusing this morning, it's still not clear who won Iowa. The issue creating chaos overnight as the candidates set their sights on New Hampshire. Stunning announcement. I have to tell you something today that I wish I didn't have to tell you. Rush Limbaugh revealing he's been diagnosed with advanced lung cancer. We're tracking hundreds of comments on our CARE 11 Facebook page. Keeping count. A new decade means it's time to fill out that census, the forms you can expect in your mailbox, and how they could impact you for years to come. And the state of streaming. We look at how many hours we're all sitting in front of screens as the number of services continue to grow. It's Tuesday, February 4th. CARE 11 Sunrise starts now. Good morning. Trending number one on Twitter this morning. Hashtag Iowa. Yeah, history unfolding there as the nation waits on results from the state caucus. We're going to keep on waiting. Yeah, a technical glitch leaving the candidates there in limbo. So we're going to get to that story in just a minute. But we want to know what you think about all this chaos. You can join the conversation right now using the hashtag Sunrisers. Yeah. Yeah. Not what we expect in this day and age. No. Let's get those uh, no. things tallied. Hey, but first we want to get a look at the weather. Here's a live picture from Minneapolis. Can't see much of that weather right now, but it is a little cooler out there. Sven, yeah. how low are those temps going to dip? Well, we're uh, in the low teens this morning, which is not dramatic for the time of year, but you know we haven't seen temperatures like this in a couple of weeks. Actually, it feels like it's four below now. That wind chill uh, decreasing even this morning. So dress for sub-zero feeling like temperatures out there, six below in St. Cloud. Even skies are clear though. We are going to see sunshine today, and we pop back into the low twenties later. And a look at the roads this morning. Waking up in White Bear Lake, pretty quiet. Uh, live look 61 at 7th Street. Just see someone. Uh, up early walking about this morning. Just watch out for that, guys. You're headed out the door. Uh, no crashes. Drive times here around the Twin Cities Metro looking pretty good. I'll have another check of your Sunrise Drive in a few minutes. Let's get back to that developing story in Iowa. Caucus results being manually counted after what's being called a reporting issue. That means we still don't have a winner. Yeah, a lot to unpack this morning. Our team coverage starts with Ellery McArdle. Ellery, when will we find out who won? Well, gee, that's a good uh, question, but the uh, Iowa Democratic Party is saying sometime today. You know, this mess is centered around a new mobile app that precinct leaders were supposed to use to report their results. But when many tried downloading the app, they got warnings saying that the file could harm their phone. So there was confusion of whether or not to download it in the first place. One precinct leader tried using the app to report his results and it turned into a long wait. My app to report never was really set up properly from the beginning, so I kind of knew I was going to be calling on, on the phone, and I've uh, yeah, been on hold for about an hour and a half. The Iowa Democratic Party wants to make it clear that this is a reporting issue. It's not a hack. Right now they're uh, counting the results using a tech system, photos, and a paper trail to make sure everything matches up. Now, earlier yesterday there were signs that this app was going to be a problem. The Today Show is taking a deeper look into this issue. Uh, they've got their investigation airing this morning at 7 o'clock right after sunrise, so you can check that out. Gia? All right, thanks, Ellery. The Biden campaign demanding answers. New this morning, we're seeing a letter sent to Iowa officials asking for a full explanation of its quality methods before official results are released. Despite the fact that no winner has been named, the candidates aren't wasting time, some of them already claiming victory. I have a good feeling we're going to be doing very, very well here in Iowa. By all indications, we are going on to New Hampshire victorious. Tonight has already showed that Americans have a deep hunger for big structural change. Yeah, Amy Klobuchar isn't letting the delay stop her campaign. This is video of her plane arriving in New Hampshire overnight. John Croman spent Monday with Klobuchar's team. He picks up our team coverage. A lot of unanswered questions this morning in Iowa about who won and by how much, but Senator Amy Klobuchar did not wait for those results. She took the stage here at her party at the downtown Marriott in Des Moines to say that she's moving on to New Hampshire and feels some momentum. We know there's delays, but we know one thing. We are punching above our weight. Klobuchar repeating the underdog theme of someone outperforming expectations. Debate after debate after debate, and all I can say is we are here and we are strong. Amy, Amy Klobuchar. It was a night marked by crowded caucuses and 
hopeful signs for Klobuchar's fans in Iowa, as we heard from Minnesota House Speaker Melissa Hortman. I'm hearing really incredible results from the precinct captains from all over the state, so super hopeful. Very, everybody's, of course, very frustrated about the technology. Frustration abounded for Iowans concerned about their future as the first testing ground for the presidential sweepstakes. A lot of confusion. I, I don't know why the results aren't out yet. It doesn't look good for Iowa in the big picture of being in the leading state. We should have had this down. It's disappointing. We are way on the board. So let's stay up, let's stay up, let's stay happy, and let's head to New Hampshire. Thank you, Iowa. I love you. Well, four years ago, we were in Des Moines telling you that Minnesota's latest presidential candidate, Michelle Bachman, was leaving the race after the Iowa caucuses. But we do not see that happening with Amy Klobuchar. She's going to continue on the campaign trail. In Des Moines, John Croman, CARE 11 News. Again, we still don't know when the results will be announced. That's why we're making it easy for you to stay updated. At any time, you can message us for updates. Just text the word Iowa to 763-797-7215. Okay, on the Republican side of things, President Trump is projected winner of I in Iowa. Not a real surprise because the president doesn't have any major GOP challengers. The president is back in D.C. this morning where he's set to deliver his State of the Union address. There's a live picture right there. It comes as lawmakers wrap up his impeachment trial. He's expected to be acquitted tomorrow. However, some lawmakers say there's not enough bipartisan support to condemn his actions. More on this story coming up on the Today Show right after sunrise. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in the morning rush. The Minnesota doctor who treated Prince before his death has been ordered to pay a $4,600 fine by the state medical board. Dr. Michael Schulenberg admitted to prescribing Prince a painkiller under his bodyguard's name. But investigators cleared him in the singer's death, finding he did not prescribe the lethal counterfeit medication that killed Prince. Officials at Minnesota State College Southeast are looking for the person who made a credible threat that led to a lockdown yesterday afternoon. They said the threat was against members of its community on its Winona campus. Police gave an all clear a few hours after the lockdown. The campus is expected to reopen this morning. A Wasika police officer shot in the head while on duty last month is in better spirits after moving out of the ICU. Officer Eric Watson has started physical therapy in a longer term care facility. His family says he's been smiling a lot more the past few days and has started eating some ice chips and bites of applesauce. Matson was injured last month while responding to a report of a suspicious person. The Timberwolves just can't seem to get out of their funk. The team's losing streak is now at 12 games after falling 113-109 to the Kings in Sacramento last night. The team faces the Atlanta Hawks tomorrow night at home. And that's your Tuesday Morning Rush. To one of our most talked about stories online in this morning's Digital Dive, more than 500 of you commenting about the shocking announcement made by conservative talk show host Rush Limbaugh. The 69-year-old says he's advanced lung cancer. Now, Limbaugh made the announcement to his millions of listeners on his radio show yesterday, saying his diagnosis was confirmed by two medical institutions just last month. He said that he began having shortness of breath, which is why he decided to go see a doctor. Limbaugh has been hosting his nationally syndicated show for the past 31 years. He's an ally to President Trump, among other Republicans, and typically has it out for Democrats. He told listeners that he may be absent from time to time getting treatments, but he hopes to be back on the show this Thursday. Now, the news seemed to unite Democrats and Republicans, even if it was just for a moment. Lynn here saying she doesn't like him whatsoever, but she's praying he has a full recovery. She added, in the meantime, he needs to step away from the mic, just like he thought Congressman Elijah Cummings should have done. And Mariah shared the same sentiments, saying that she doesn't agree with a lot of his, a lot of his views, but she hopes he is victorious in his fight against cancer. We do have more about this story posted right now at care11.com. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people, you guys, pretty shocked to hear this yeah. yesterday. Polarizing yeah. guy. I mean, I think yeah. he's got 20 million listeners a day, but I mean, people either love him or hate him, but it's good to see people yeah. at least, you know, wishing him the best. Uniting together. Sure, wish him well. All right, Sven, let's go to you with our One Thing Weather. Yeah, we're looking at uh, a chillier day for sure. Wind chills below zero this morning. Highs back in the low 20s, and we are going to see sunshine. And the good news, no crashes to slow you down as you're headed out the door. Live look in Minneapolis, just outside the Lowry Hill Tunnel, 94 at Lindale Avenue, where traffic is starting to pick up a little bit there. Well, how much
much of your day are you binge watching your favorite shows? Yeah, according to a new report, a lot. A firm that tracks a video streaming found there was 58% increase in the time spent streaming worldwide in the last three months of 2019. In the U.S., it grew even more at 61%, but as more streaming options become available, time will tell what they will do to our streaming habits. Streaming a little late last night, Chris? Yeah, I know. <laughs> a lot of streaming going on in my yeah, house. Yeah, I just streamed uh, the whole, oh, I, I was just uh, binge watched Cheer, and that's a Cheer leading documentary, but yes. Yeah, I heard that was good. Was, was good. it? Should was I get good. on that? You should get on it. All right, I'll see if I got time. <laughs> it's a new decade, which means it's time for another census. We'll tell you how to fill it out and why your contribution is so important for the entire state. Plus, just about everybody wants to improve safety on the light rail and buses, but lawmakers don't agree on how to do it. The new plan they're debating and what it might mean for your wallet. And if you were a 24 year old Super Bowl MVP, how would you celebrate? The answer uh, the awesome way Patrick Mahomes spent his first day as a champion. Okay.